everybody, and welcome to 10 Things You May Not Know About the Battle of Fredericksburg. The Battle of Fredericksburg was fought during the American Civil War between December 11th and 15th, 1862, in and around the town of Fredericksburg in Eastern Virginia. It was a decisive victory for the Army of Northern Virginia, commanded by Confederate General Robert E. Lee over the Army of the Potomac under Union Major General Ambrose E. Burnside. One of the battle's most famous scenes, the disastrous Union assault on Maurice Heights, was portrayed in the 2003 film Gods and Generals, but there's so much more to Fredericksburg that you may not know. Let's take a look at 10 facts about the battle. Number one, Fredericksburg was the largest battle ever fought on the North American continent. An estimated 122,000 Union and 78,500 Confederate soldiers were present on the battlefield at Fredericksburg, with nearly 187,000 of them engaged in combat. That's more than the estimated 180,000 men who fought at the Battle of Gettysburg nearly seven months later. Number two, General Burnside didn't want command of the Union Army. Born the son of a South Carolina slave owner, Ambrose Everett Burnside is best remembered for his facial hair which inspired the word sideburns. Before the war, he was wounded in the neck by an arrow while fighting Apache Indians in the West. While recovering from his wound, he first came up with the idea that eventually became known as the Burnside Carbine, a weapon that was popular with Union cavalry during the Civil War. When Burnside received his orders to take command of the Army of the Potomac in November of 1862, it was said he wept like a child. He had twice before refused the command, believing he wasn't up to the task. Burnside was dashing, charming, and humble. He was popular with his soldiers. He invented a weapon that helped the Union win the war and was elected to some of the highest offices in the land after the war. He was also completely unsuited to command of an army, and no one knew that better than Ambrose Burnside. Number three, the fighting near Telegraph Hill resulted in one of the most famous quotes of the American Civil War. According to Edward Porter Alexander's Military Memoirs of a Confederate, General Robert E. Lee turned to General James Longstreet while observing the fight at the Confederate Center and said, It is well that war is so terrible, or we would grow too fond of it. Slight variations of this quote have appeared throughout the years, sometimes claiming Lee actually spoke the words while observing the fight on Maurice Heights. It's interesting to note that Longstreet himself made no mention of this conversation in his own memoirs. Regardless of where or to whom the words were spoken, they are a revealing insight into the mind of a combat commander on the battlefield. Number four, The Angel of Maurice Heights. By dawn on December 14th, over 8,000 dead and wounded Union soldiers lay on the ground in front of the stone wall at Maurice Heights. Soldiers from both sides were forced to listen to the painful cries of the wounded for hours, with neither side daring to venture out for fear of being shot by the enemy. At some point during the day, Sergeant Richard Kirkland of the 2nd South Carolina approached Confederate Brigadier General Joseph B. Kershaw and informed him that he wished to help the wounded Union soldiers. By Kershaw's own account, at first he denied the request, but he later relented. However, when Kirkland asked if he could display a white handkerchief, General Kershaw stated that he could not do that. Kirkland responded, All right, sir, I'll take my chances. He gathered all the canteens he could carry, filled them with water, and ventured out onto the battlefield. He went back and forth several times, giving aid to wounded Union soldiers with water, warm clothing, and blankets. At first, both armies watched as he performed his task, with a few Union soldiers actually taking shots and a man they believed to be looting the bodies of dead soldiers. But eventually, both sides cheered for him as he moved from one wounded soldier to another. General Kershaw later stated that he observed Kirkland do this for more than an hour and a half, not stopping until he had helped every wounded soldier on his end of the battlefield. Sergeant Kirkland survived the battle and went on to fight at Chancellorsville and at Gettysburg, after which he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. On September 20th, 1863, he and two other men took command of a charge near Snodgrass Hill during the Battle of Chickamauga. Realizing they had advanced too far forward of their own unit, they attempted to return, but Kirkland was shot. His last words were, I'm done for. Save yourselves and please tell my pa I died right. In 1965, sculptor Felix de Weldon unveiled a statue in front of the stone wall at the Fredericksburg battlefield in Kirkland's honor. 
The Sons of Confederate Veterans posthumously awarded Kirkland their Confederate Medal of Honor, created in 1977. Number five, much of the city of Fredericksburg was destroyed by Union artillery. One author described the scene this way. When night descended, the flames of burning houses still lit up the landscape. And though the continuous roar of batteries was hushed, a sullen gun at intervals resembled the growl of a wild animal who retires with reluctance from his prey. The result of this bombardment was cruel and the scenes which followed it sufficient to excite the sensibilities of the most hard-hearted. Men, women, and children had been driven from the town, and hundreds of ladies and children were seen wandering homeless and without shelter over the frozen highway, with bare feet and thin clothing, knowing not where to find a place of refuge. Number six, Fredericksburg became the scene of large-scale looting by Union soldiers. After the Union Army crossed the Rappahannock River, they quickly occupied the town. December 12th was a day of little fighting between the two armies, giving Union soldiers time to roam Fredericksburg. Many found the abandoned houses too tempting and took supplies and souvenirs. Petty thieving soon escalated into full-scale looting. Soldiers stole what they wanted and destroyed everything else that they could not use. Furniture was dragged into the streets and men lounged about as if at home or broke up the pieces for firewood. Precious family heirlooms, china, paintings, mirrors, all were destroyed. Men invaded the most private spaces of homes and emerged decked out in women's dresses and undergarments, frolicking in the streets in their attire. The destruction was a marked shift in policy towards civilians. Previously, Union armies took great care to protect private property. Now, they destroyed it at will. They deserved it all, for there is not a stronger secession city in Virginia than Fredericksburg, wrote one soldier, and another mused, do our friends cry out against this? Yes. So do we. It is wrong, essentially wrong, but it is war. Number seven. Fighting on the southern end of the battlefield in an area known as Slaughter Pen Farm produced over 5,000 casualties. It was also the scene of countless acts of heroism on both sides. The 13th Massachusetts Infantry, having been deployed as skirmishers during the early stages of the fight, withdrew after running out of ammunition. As they made their way back to the staging area where the Federal advance had begun, Private George Maynard of Company D looked around and was unable to locate his friend Charles Armstrong. Determined to find his comrade, Maynard proceeded on his own back to the front. A firestorm enveloped his unit's former position. Amidst the hail of bullets, Maynard located Armstrong, who had been wounded in the leg and left on the field. Private Maynard quickly made an improvised tourniquet in the field, applied it to his friend's leg, and carried him back as bullets whizzed all around. He managed to escape the field unscathed and took his friend to a Union field hospital. Sadly, that friend, Charles Armstrong, died of his wounds on the evening of December 13th. But for his actions that day, George Maynard received the Medal of Honor, one of five men who would receive that distinction on the Slaughter Pen Farm that day, and one of 19 who received the Medal of Honor for heroism at Fredericksburg. Number eight. Fredericksburg produced some of the most lopsided casualty figures for any battle during the American Civil War. Though fighting on the southern flank produced roughly equal casualties on either side, the fighting on the northern half, in particular around Maurice Heights, produced eight Union casualties for every one on the Confederate side. The final numbers for the battle were 12,600 killed, wounded, and missing on the Union side, compared to just 5,400 Confederates lost. Number nine, during the Fredericksburg campaign, nearly 10,000 slaves left area plantations and city households to gain freedom by crossing the Rappahannock River to Stafford County and joining the Union lines. John Washington, a literate slave who crossed to freedom, wrote later about people watching the approach of Union troops across the river from the town. Quote, no one could be seen on the street but the colored people, and every one of them seemed to be in the best of humors. Number 10, renowned author Louisa May Alcott served as a nurse at a Union hospital in Georgetown beginning shortly after the Battle of Fredericksburg. She aided wounded soldiers from the battle until she contracted typhoid fever as a result of her close work with the diseased men. 
Later, she wrote about her experiences in a series of letters for the abolitionist paper, The Boston Commonwealth. The entire series of letters, published as hospital sketches in 1863, earned Alcott her first public attention as an author, as well as praise for both her sensitivity and wit. Five years later, she would go on to become one of America's foremost writers with her classic novel, Little Women. So there you have it. Ten things you may not have known about the Battle of Fredericksburg. Please feel free to add your own facts about the battle in the comment section below and subscribe for new videos every day relating to history, strategy gaming, and much more. Thanks for watching.